just like that. Bam! One minute you're out home, the next minute you're bottling a marlin in blue clear water. Smoking hot up, getting a tan, next thing you know you're back in uh, Canada. Frozen. Sick as a dog. Sort of glad to be back, sort of not. But I'll tell you what man, getting sick sucks. I don't ever do the man cold flavor of getting sick with the typical, right? You know, where the ladies pick on us for being wimps when we get sick, but it just makes me angry. Getting sick makes me angry. It's just such a, it's a speed bump that stays underneath your ass the whole time. It's frustrating for me. But anyway, yeah, we got down there and uh, I think I might, I'll do a video for the how to hunt channel on the whole fishing trip, the do's, the don'ts, what I learned, what I did, what we saw, what I videotaped. And, uh, yeah, it was a real eye-opener eye for me. Never been down there. It was uh, a lot to talk about, a lot to share. Too much for right now for this channel, but... Yeah, first night went oh, good. Second day, and then after that, got the old typical Mexican bug that affects you down at that end, right? <laughs> Manageable. And then the, the last day there, I picked up another bug that gave me the chills. Headache snot the whole nine yards so i think i'm i think i'm at a peaked last night so I was sick all the way home just makes you angry right but anyway i'm back and there's a lot of emails stacked up i didn't have a chance to get a, emails down there i'll see if i can manage one video while, while we were down there but uh that was it but anyway let's see what we got who needs to be heard let's see if i could pull this off with my airport readers <laughs> lost a share maybe i'll share at the end of this who knows so there's so many emails you guys which is good all right here i think that i've got three or four or five screenshots on here i think they're comments from videos all right that obviously must have been worthy to be shared with a lot of people. So here we go. I'm telling you, Steve, the best technique known to man that trains a person to harness their gut instinct is called Sahaja Yoga. S-A-H-A-J-A -A -A Yoga. It fully explains our internal workings of how Holy Spirit moves through our bodies. Excuse me. I believe these abilities are already built into us all. We just have to I believe these abilities are already built into us all. We just have to feel them and tap into them. But Sahaja Yoga is like taking you into the Mariana Trench or the submarine versus a wading in the kiddie pool with floaties. I am a believer in reincarnation and I feel that I was a Sahaja Yogi in the past life. And these skills followed me into my next life. This is how powerful and pure I believe Sahaja Yoga to be. There are dark forces at work on this planet, some of which might blow people's minds if they had heard what might actually be going on. Soul trapping, manipulation of reincarnation, time travel, etc. Time of exposure is upon us. Well, that was a different kind of a screenshot thrown in there, isn't it? Well, maybe somebody can relate to that, maybe somebody can't. More puzzle pieces for those looking for answers, right? Of all sorts of topics. What's this one? I've had a lot of close encounters on a piece of land I lived on for 10 years. Now my curiosity is super perked because my two golden retrievers and I got lymphoma at the same time. What? The first one died. Then eight months later, the second one died while I was in ICU getting chemo for stage four mantle cell lymphoma. I did that for eight months and was told I had six months to live. I sold my land and moved deeper into the mountains onto bare land in a camper to enjoy what I had left instead of more treatment. I started eating apricot seeds and building a cabin. It sure prolonged my life. Now I'm sitting by my fire in my cabin five years later listening to this. I have them here though too though and I've wondered if the same one comes around I'm 30 miles away that's alarming and interesting the same time um, if you're here 
Still, Scott, please, could you email us, quote, the beginning of your, of your comment, I have had a lot of close encounters. That's from you. Please, email us in some details on those close encounters, would you? There's a lot of questions that come from this one. Same being, what it looked like, how close, what are we talking about? Nighttime, daytime? Friendly, angry, scary? Please email us back, all right, man? Especially with that mention of your two dogs and you getting that? That's alarming. We need to hear about that and share it, I believe. Here's another screenshot. Mark, this is red. My husband's son and a friend were duck hunting two weeks ago. It was pouring rain over 10 inches that day. They came home and told me they heard knocking on trees and heard an animal sound. They had not heard before. My son laughed and said, Mom, you called them in by watching your Bigfoot guy. I do not make calls or anything like that, but I do believe and know. A big one and a little one crossed the road a couple of miles from here last summer. The lady, the lady and grandkids were freaked out. She made a Facebook post and there were hundreds of people who had something to say. That's it for that one. All right, Rebecca. You need to follow up. Well, you don't need to. But if you would, if you got time, we'd appreciate it if you followed up and emailed me at share my story at howtohunt.com and give us more details of all those people who had a lot to say. We want to know what they had, had a lot to say about here. Okay? If you would, if you could. Here's another screenshot. I was in Montana in, the, in September. Our cabin was about 500 yards up the slope from a small high altitude lake. It was open around the lake except the north side. Trees and growth up to the edge of the lake. I was up one night around 1 a.m. sitting on the porch. No wind and peaceful quiet. After sitting there about 15 minutes, I heard a loud splash in the lake. But two minutes later, same thing again. It was a bright night and I could see well, but I... It was a bright night and I could see well. I could see the ripples on the water. I heard this four or five more times. After the third one, I focused in on the shoreline where it met the trees. And that's when I saw a basketball-sized rock fly out of the trees. I saw the next three as, the, as well. I saw the next three as well fly out of the trees. End O screenshot comment. I wonder why they do that. I guess it'd be kind of fun. I'm trying to find a picture of me being one of these beings. I might do the same thing, maybe. I'd probably be more creative if I wanted to freak people out, though, than just throwing boulders. Here's another one. Another screenshot. I've been down, I want to say, too many dark rabbit holes over the last four to five years to not understand what you are fully talking about. Trying not to say outright on some topics. I've had my own encounters with Sasquatch on my farm for years. And I've spent hours upon hours, usually all day, every day, searching and learning the truth of this world. And you sometimes need a strong stomach. Stomach. Agreed. I therefore understand your frustration in, where do I start? I enjoyed your podcast with Nino the other day. Be safe, take care, and many thanks for what you're doing. All right, appreciate appreciate the note and the heads up that there's a lot more people out there on the same page, right? The same page. The dominant topic of this channel more or less just confirms that there is a lot more going on and that this topic is a very easy one to deliver to the people only because of the sheer eyewitness testimonies around the world, right? backs up that there is a lot going on and everything you know what do we hear from a lot of people what's the what's the saying again nothing is as it seems to us in this lifetime couldn't be couldn't be more bang on truthful statement is that if you have it in you to be aware and think for yourself and not prefer to put your head in a hole in the sand right it's frustrating watching people. I spend time with a handful of people that keep their head in the sand. And it's kind of frustrating. We don't really have 
I notice that with people like that, for me, the conversation is pretty simple most of the time. Not too much overall interesting substance. You know what I mean? Do you know? You know what I mean? You know a lot of you know what I'm throwing down. Kind people, good friends, but limited. Do you know what I mean? Limited on what you can really talk about. It can be frustrating and. It keeps me curious watching people that prefer to not acknowledge all the shit going on. It's interesting to me to watch them navigate this lifetime. And what they focus on, what they talk about, what concerns them, and what doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting to me and sometimes surprising and maybe even shocking in a way. When so much is going on in our face it directly, directly affects every single human being here on a large scale and the amount of people that just don't give it any attention at all is rather bizarre to watch for me anyway try not to babble be patient with me i'm sick as a dog right now i'm gonna turn that heater off that's an annoying background sound for me <clears throat> excuse me all right, here we go. This is an email titled, An Arizona for Experience. Haven't heard from you guys in a while. Here we go. Hi, Steve, it's Chris from the Arizona Four. I want to share an experience with you from this past summer that you all may find interesting. Right on. This past August, myself, Kevin, and Wayne went to one of our spots that we refer to as Squatch Camp, a remote spot somewhat isolated up in the Mogollon Rim. In Arizona, this is a very special place. One that we have have one, the one that we have a lot of history with, especially Kevin, whose journey really started here. Our first night was mellow, beautiful, cool weather, and we decided to forego the tents and sleep out under the moon. Except for Wayne, who brought his palatial travel trailer and slept in his queen size bed. Cheater. <laughs> then complained about the mattress the whole next day. Pussy. <laughs> Kidding. We've had some amazing encounters here, but this trip was something new. The night was quiet. No real activity of note, so we decided to take a stroll up the road adjacent to camp just to stretch our legs. While we rarely have fires that night, there was a full moon, and the area was well lit as a result. While walking up the road, both Wayne and Kevin saw a shadowy figure across the trail about 40 yards in front of us. I was looking off to the side, so I missed it. Anyway, we walked to where the crossing occurred, seeing no prints, I will add, and turned to face the direction that the being seemed to come from. This is where it gets interesting. The area of origin was well forested, and all through the trees, it there was all through the trees, bit of a typo, it there was manifesting an electrical discharge that we have often witnessed, something that we refer to as twinkle lights. We don't know what causes this, but the phenomena usually seems to either herald their presence or occurs when they're around. Yeah, it's a strong pattern, right, you guys? Very strong pattern. The lights accompanying seeing a being that we're not familiar with. While stopping to watch this, Wayne walked off the path and entered the area where the where the being exited from. Kevin and I watched intently as Wayne walked about five steps away from us, then appeared to vanish. No way. Kevin yelled his name and Wayne responded, although his voice sounded muffled. Mind you, he wasn't but seven or eight feet away from us and the moon was so bright that we could see clearly well beyond where he had walked. I moved to the right about 45 degrees from my original position and Wayne reappeared to my sight. But he looked like he was covered in static discharge. And when I moved back to my original position, he once again vanished from my sight. Wayne slowly retreated backwards and began to fully reappear and was completely normal and okay. Thank God. Holy shit. We retreated from the area and made our way back to camp where we spent many hours hypothesizing on what we had just witnessed. Was this some kind of portal phenomenon? Who knows? But the only thing I know was the surety is that it happened. 
and to reaffirm the fact that there is an unknown paranormal element that accompanies the Sabe. I defy anyone to label it with accuracy because we just don't know. So many, quote, experts, ex, end quote, parroting someone else's beliefs in this stuff that it clouds reason. The value is in the experiences themselves. The rest is merely opinion, theory, and conjecture. Well suited for campfire conversation and moronic podcast, but not much else. Find commonalities in the different experiences as relayed by other here at How to Hunt has far more value. Agreed. The Owl Man, Mr. Ash's Diaries, and a few others are having experiences that coincide with what we are experiencing and somewhat validate that we are not alone or that we are just friggin' nuts. Anyway, enough out of me. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to you and Sarah and, this, and to this unique community that I am honored to be a part of. Chris slash the Arizona Four, December 16th. Right on, man, appreciate that. There you go. All right, it's amazing. It's amazing, well, I'll never shut up about this, but it's just something that's on a shelf in the back of my mind that ticks me off, is how many of the original so-called experts, right, the big names in the Bigfoot world, <laughs> have completely ignored these topics and these thousands of experiences that other people have had around the planet and not talked about it, not mentioned it, kept it suppressed at all costs. And if anybody came forward to talk the truth, they go after them and try to annihilate them. Why is that, right? It's funny. So while I was reading that part of your email of uh, you could hear him, but he was, you couldn't see him. My instant thought was, oh, if I was only there with a fishing rod and a GoPro. <laughs> that would be something. I wonder if that would even work. Or if the uh, electricity, the energy, the energy in one of these areas would stop the recording or fry the battery of the GoPro. I don't know, but I would tell you, man, if you could. Find a place like that and throw the camera. I mean, you know what I do. I love filming everything, right? But if you could, if you could have be pre some what, have a pocket fisherman in your backpack as a go-to piece of equipment with a GoPro already tied to it, with some maybe hundred-pound test braid line on it, so it can't just snap off, and wing it into one of these energy fields, mirage portal opening, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is. Something odd. Wouldn't that be something else? You would be running home with that SD card like a freaking... Yeah, that'd be crazy, wouldn't it? But anyway, that's very interesting and alarming. I hope I hope he is okay physically. I didn't pick something up from that, right? Like it was just mentioned with the man and his dogs or Edgar or whoever else, right? That's pretty bizarre. I wonder how many people have had something real similar happen and still don't have the guts to talk about it publicly. Well, if you are out there and you have had that happen, I hope you understand now this is a safe place to spill it and share it. All right? Do it. Spill it and share it. Appreciate you guys, man. Stay in touch, please. Email more knowledge when you can, please. And have a great Christmas and New Year, too. And be safe and healthy. Here's another title, a few more incidents at the ranch. Hi Steve, this is Deborah in Texas again. I have a few more things I want to tell you that happened on our ranch in the springtime. I sleep with my upstairs window open. On one of the nights that I slept with my window open, I was awakened during the night by a deep, heavy male voice outside saying, Ho wee! Ho wee! And I sat up and listened. I got up to look out the window, and it was pitch black outside, and I didn't see anything. Excuse me. Another night I was awakened by a female voice saying, Paul Pone. Paul Pone. In an impatient manner, the way you would tell your child, Come on, come on, hurry up. I didn't see anything outside when I looked out. When I looked to see who was saying it, but we have... We have a lot of trucks in the driveway, so it would provide an easy place to hide out of view. I have also been woke up by the sound of the sun's truck doors slamming shut a few times. I first thought it could be a vagrant, 
I even talked to the sheriff about a few things happening around here. One strange thing that happened was when I took my friend Mark with me on the cell phone, sorry, when I took my friend Mark with me on the cell phone with the camera turned on so he could watch me do the chores, is that I sat my phone on a blue barrel that was full of water like I usually do so that he has a good view of me while I work. Son had a mountain lion 30 feet behind him by the chicken coop a few months ago, so I just feel safer taking someone with me. Okay, I got you. So you're putting your phone on on FaceTime with a friend, put on the barrel so they can keep an eye on you while you're doing your thing in case something happens. Got it. I got all my chores done and went to grab the phone and tell Mark that I was finished. He said, Who is that man looking at your pigs? I immediately freaked out because I never saw anyone. He described the man to me and I never saw anyone, which is so strange. The next day, someone lays half of a watermelon at her front gate. You would have to get out and unlock and open the gate and move the watermelon out of the way to drive through the gate. My ex-hubby told me that someone must know that we have pigs. So, ex-hubby had moved the watermelon over to the side of the gate as he was leaving for work because he didn't want to run, it, run over it. I had a trail cam posted at the front gate. It picks up all the cars and trucks moving by on the road. So the trail cam was blank from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. where nothing was filmed or recorded. The watermelon was there at 10 p.m. but was gone by 1 a.m. The entire watermelon was picked up and taken away. The trail cam did not get triggered to record anything that had picked up that watermelon and walked away with it. I talked to the sheriff's wife, who lives about three ranches down from us, and she also thought that was strange. Another time, my son was urinating off the front porch about 2 a.m. He said he looked up and saw a dark being, or shadow of a being, walking up a small hill over to his right, which is where the garage and concrete driveway is. He rushed inside. Another time, I was taking my dog out for the last time. It was dark out, and I was a bit nervous about being out in the dark. I suddenly heard a tree thrashing and violently shaking. It was crazy. It was a huge oak tree. In the front yard was where the forest starts. I couldn't see what it was, but I was stepping on my dog while frantically trying to get back in the house. My dog never barked, but was trying to get back in the door as fast as I was. I seriously doubt a mountain lion, the biggest wild animal we have here on the ranch supposedly, could shake that huge tree so violently. Another time I was on a call with my friend in England. As I said above, we always do video chat where I, where I turn on the camera so he can see everything that I see. He comes along with me for moral support because I'm afraid to go feed my chickens alone now after all the things that have happened to us here in the ranch. I was walking out of the chicken run and looked up about 30 yards away. I saw a tall, blonde Bigfoot that I can only describe as a winter wheat color, standing there just looking at me. I saw it, and it saw me for about three to four seconds. We looked at each other, and suddenly it turned around and did what I can only describe as a swan dive behind a pile of brush. I was so shocked and couldn't believe what I just saw. I was freaking out and telling my friend about it while he was on the phone. I wished he had seen it. It was one of the six creatures that I've seen here on the ranch. I have a sister that lives in Alabama. She was telling me that her minister stopped by for a visit. She said he likes to go kayaking in the bay. He told her that he was carrying his kayak, kayak down to the beach when two men came running up the trail toward him. They were telling the minister that there was a large creature down there near the beach that it had a wolf or a dog's head. The two guys were getting the heck out of there. I believe she said he went ahead down to the beach and was kayaking, but never did see it. Another time I was standing in the driveway and heard something to my left. I saw something running on all fours. My first thought was bear because it was big and black, but we didn't have bear in our area. I was sure that it wasn't a wild hog. I'm not sure what it was. I had my son listen to you read my last email. 
You heard you read the part about the twine being taken out into the forest and told me that I was wrong about what I told you about the twine being weaved around the trees in the forest. He said that it was over limbs. They were high and low on different trees as well. He was the one who went into the forest to retrieve the twine for me, and I thought he said it was only weaved around the trees. I was surprised when he told me it was over some tall tree limbs. That cannot be a raccoon. That cannot be a raccoon, fox, coyote, bobcat, or anything else I could think of. It was something with hands. It was unrolling the twine. It had to be unwound off the spool. Another time, my side-by-side -side broke down, and I had to walk the thousand feet down to the chicken coop. When I got to the curve in the road, I was hearing rocks clacking. It made me think that something was putting something on a large rock, which we have many of, where the sounds were coming from, and hitting it with smaller rock to crack something open. On many occasions, my son will get up every two hours through the night and turn a, turn a, and turn a brisket in the smoker. He has told me about hearing things in the woods saying, help me, help me, in a strange voice, but yet imitating a rooster. This is all I can think of at the moment. If I can think of any more, I'll send it. I'm sending two of the videos that I mentioned in the last video. You're welcome to play them for your audience. One is the twine video and the other is the Bigfoot or Dogman, whatever it was, that was smacking its lips that day I was in the garden planting tomatoes. This is the Bigfoot video folder that I created on Mega to send you these two files that I wanted you to see and share with your audience. Thanks again, Steve. I hope this helps your listeners know that these beings are there, Deb Brown. All right, so I'm going to have to crack open the email to find those videos. Hopefully they're there, <laughs> right? Man. Lots of people would probably be wondering how you're still living there, right? That's a lot to uh, have to accept and live side by side with. I mean, who wants the... It kind of sucks that we people have to live at, in their home and be terrified to go across your, your own home. Leave your door in the dark and be too terrified to do that, to go see the chickens or whatever. That's bullshit, isn't it? It's not fair, right? That's not fair. And a quick note on the trail camera on the watermelon. Just so you guys all know, I've shared it before. Um, and I run a lot of trail cameras all year. And I'm not saying that the camera just mixed, missed it. But I am saying that for anybody who's curious, when, when a trail camera misses something that happened in front of the camera... Um, we cannot just automatically go to thinking it was supernatural. Although, in Deborah's case, it probably was. But I'm just saying, if you rely on one trail camera to pick up something moving in front of it, it's, it's, it's a waste of time. Because every single trail camera I have used, doesn't matter the brand, every single one of them does not pick up everything. I, I had... Four trail cameras on my most important game trail, one of my black-tailed deer spots, which I always have every year for I don't know how many years now. And I, when I just recently went on that last hunt, I got that big buck in my boat. I had four trail cameras over 20 yards. 20 yards of that trail, four different cameras, one absolute fail, the other three missed and picked up. I have them all set on 15-second videos. And the other three cameras did not pick up the same animal going along the trail in that same uh time period meaning the big buck came down the trail in broad daylight i think it was like one in the afternoon one camera picked it up and it didn't trigger until he was almost through the field of view okay and the other two cameras didn't pick up that buck in broad daylight walking right in front of them and then a couple of days later a handful of does are playing around in front of the cameras those two cameras picked up the does playing in the front and the other camera that picked up the buck didn't pick it up. It's very frustrating, but it also shows me just how primitive the technology is that we're allowed to play with. Right? 
We're only allowed to have these dog shit items. They're supposed to be a state of the art, modern technology. Nope. No, we don't get those. We don't get to have those things. Got to accept that fact. But anyway, I just want to share that and try to get that knowledge that I've gained out there as much as I can. All right, because I know there's a lot of people out there who put absolute confidence into trail cameras today, which is the wrong thing to do because they are very primitive pieces of technology that are available for us, as is most of the technology that the general public is allowed to have access to. Okay? That's a whole other topic that we could probably take on and talk about for a full video segment plus is technology and knowledge that the general public is allowed to have access to. We are limited, and we are limited intentionally, and I would bet my life on that fact. It's obvious, and it's easy to figure out. Hey, what is it? What's the uh, the word? The word in the street is uh, what the government and the military have for technology. The general public is, what, 50, let's say 50 years behind or something like that? I don't know whoever made up that equation, but it seems to be the popular statement. Would I believe that to be true? Yeah, for sure. Anyway, back to you, Deborah. Appreciate you sending that in. Um, I'm sorry that you have to have somebody on FaceTime watching you in your backyard do your chores and shit because you're nervous. That sucks. It's a, it's a shitty sentence, right? It's a shitty sentence to have is, is having all this going on, on your at your home not having the knowledge, the accurate knowledge from day one, so you know what to expect, you know what that is, you know why they're doing that, you know when to expect them, you know how to prevent it, you know. No, we're not allowed to know. You just get to have these little terrifying tidbits, right? Anyway. Okay, moving along. Who's next? All right, this next one is titled, Bigfoot Met Me Bow Hunting. Said a lot of people, actually. Hi, Steve. I have a chilling story to tell you. It all starts back in 86 or 87 bow season. I have, after a big buck all season, maybe... I think he meant I hunted. I hunted after big buck all season, maybe a 185, 190 class buck. Walking the creek bottom for some time in the hemlocks, and it was getting dark in them. So I made it to a clearing about... 0.5 mile. I saw a few deer and a couple small bucks, not what I was looking. So I headed to my truck. I was walking back next to a farm. I had a feeling that something wasn't right. So I turned around and I thought it was a bear. It was about 80 yards from me. There I was standing along a cornfield. I and it. So a few typos here. We'll get through it. I'm get picking it up though. It and it was in the cut oats field. I think he meant I and it was in the cut oats field. I had the wind in my face. That it. Oh man. I had the wind in my face. That's when it knew something was in the field with it. The animal stood up. And started walking and started walk to at me. <laughs> We're picking it up. He's about 35 or 40 yards from me now. Oh, that sucks. I said it loud. Do not make me use this bow now. It stopped, turned around, and walked away from me. It looks like a large logger, and it walked in the cutouts field. And then in the tall field corn. I did not let the grass grow under my feet, Steve. The next day I went back to the spot where it was in the cutouts. I could not walk in it, the tracks, and where it enters the corn was nine feet tall. So that made him eight feet tall and smaller than the corn. P.S. When I got home, my wife said I was as white as a cloud and my eyes were as big as a plate. Thanks, Steve, for letting me tell my story. I believe. Mike, P.A. Okay, Mike, gotcha, man. 
Don't feel bad about the typos. It happens to everybody, all right? Including me. Um, you're probably still a little freaked out just sharing it, right? As most people are. But if you get a chance, email us back to exactly what you saw. What that sucker look like. It's endless. Endless. Here's a long one. Holy shit. Might be too long for right now. What's this one? All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's titled A Strange Experience. Hello. I enjoy your YouTube channel and thought you would enjoy this story. Several years ago, my wife and I were walking unprepared down a trail in the dark. And I say unprepared because of our lack of lighting. We suddenly heard children's laugh laughter from an adjacent trail. We froze. And I asked her, did you hear that? She looked at me wide-eyed and nodded in agreement. I said, hello. And again, the sound of laughter broke the silence. In the moonlight, we could still see the main path in front of us. But the side path was thicker and darker. Only illuminated a few yards in. Another laugh. Suddenly, I felt compelled to follow the laughter and started to walk down the side path. I didn't recall this at the time, but my wife would remind me that I said, I have to go. I started to walk again and she pulled with all her might back against me and she said, I don't think you're going to come back from there. She continued to pull me down our original path and I started to come out of whatever had compelled me to walk down the side path. As we continued back down the main path, she said nervously, Did you notice the children's laughter didn't echo? We had been in an area that everything echoed, but for some reason the laughter did not. I've heard some truly strange stories on your channel. Glad to know that ours is mild in comparison. I often wonder what would have happened if my wife wouldn't have been there to stop me. But judging by her gut instinct, I think she's right. That's creepier than shit. And I got nothing I can really comment on that one because I wouldn't have a clue. That sounds absolutely bizarre and alarming and creepier than shit. No thanks, right? Wonder how many how many people listening are shaking their heads. Yeah, that happened to me too. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, this one's very long. I'm gonna do one more. All right, one more. Southwestern Ohio incidents and audiophile of, quote, roaring, end quote. Hi, Steve, love your videos and the stories that you read. Read. I've sent your site to several friends for them to enjoy. I sent this in a couple years ago and I never heard it. But since you lost so many emails, I'm sending it in again with a few details that I'd forgotten. I grew up in the middle of a forested County Park outside of Cincinnati, Cincinnati, sorry, yeah, County Park outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, and spent my childhood playing and being in the woods, even after seeing the Boggy Creek Monster when I was very young, which terrified me and gave me years and years of nightmares that always took place in my own woods. However, when I got older, I was always intrigued by all the Bigfoot stories. Around 2015, I was house slash dog sitting for a friend and her husband while they were out of town. They lived in a rural part of the southwestern Ohio, outside of Williamsburg, Ohio, in Claremont County, close to the East Fork Lake. Dense forest and a few agricultural fields. Their eight acres is mostly forest. There have been several sightings, wood knocks, rocks thrown at early morning fishermen, etc. at this lake and forested area in the past by others. One early evening after sunset, but before it was dark, I was coming in from the detached garage across their driveway to the house when I heard a loud, distinctive wood knock. I've been, I've been see, I had seen plenty of Bigfoot documentaries and even that crazy show you hate and immediately knew what it was. I stopped dead in the drive, not believing I had just heard this. I was wondering what to do for a few seconds, then decided to make a loud whoop sound, feeling more than a little foolish. About 10 seconds later, after I did a whoop, I heard a loud whoop sound in the return. In return, my first thought after hearing this was that I had absolutely no idea what I had just communicated by doing my whoop. 
and I was done experimenting. A couple hours later, I let my friend's dogs and my two dogs out into the large wooded and fenced backyard. I turned the back spotlights on as I went out the door and immediately saw a large, tall, black shape upright on two legs running very quickly through the trees on the other side of the fence. The dogs ran out to the fence line, barking furiously. I wasn't sure what I exactly saw since it happened so quickly. And I just... And I just had gotten a second to see it before it was lost in the shadows and the trees. Later that night, around 1 a.m., every single one of the five dogs are in the house, both upstairs with me and downstairs, were furiously barking. I didn't get up or look out any window, mostly since I wasn't sure what I'd see. A year or so later, at my home in Maramont, an eastern Cincinnati suburb, I lived in an extremely wooded area with a road in front of my place, then the Little Miami River. Behind my place, it went steeply uphill, all forest and a large, mostly wooded 18 square mile area with some upscale homes called Indian Hills. One summer night, I went out with my two dogs and noticed red eyes in the dark woods. I sat on the ground about 30 feet from this while the dogs sniffed around and did their business and wondered to myself what those eyes could belong to. I was mentally figuring out how quickly and steep the incline was and if this was a critter in a tree or if it was standing. However, the eyes were way larger than raccoon eyes. I knew it would have to be a... I knew it would have to be tall if it was something standing. At the time, I did not hear about glowing red Bigfoot eyes or I certainly would have never have sat there speculating so calmly. I sat there for maybe 10 minutes, very calmly thinking and wondering, when suddenly, both dogs simultaneously looked up at those eyes and they started growling loudly and ominously. That was all it took to get me up and into the house. Another time at my place, I got home just as it was getting dark. I got out of my car. I heard something very odd in the woods, an animal noise I'd never heard before and could identify. I stood by my car door for several minutes, listening, to, listening, trying to figure it out and gave up. Now, as I walked away from my car to go past some of the woods line and go inside, everything went instantly deathly quiet. It was a very odd and uncomfortable feeling. I've never felt anything so quiet like this before. I felt like I was being watched by something. Nothing else happened, and I never had that happen again there. Spring 2021. Again, out at the same friend's place I mentioned earlier while house-sitting in Claremont County, my mom came to stay with me for a week or two. One morning I was making breakfast for the two of us, and she suddenly said, There's a huge man in a fur coat standing out in the woods behind a tree looking at the house. I stopped instantly and ran over to where she was pointing out the window and saw nothing. I went out in the backyard to the edge of the fence line and stood out there for a long time, not ever seeing anything. She swore she saw exactly what she told me she saw. Fall 2021, I was once again at my friend's rural place, house slash dog sitting. This time there were roars coming from the woods behind their house one night after dark. I heard them while in the house over the sound of the TV. I had limited phone space, so only managed to record about 40 seconds outside from the back porch. But the roaring went on for about half an hour or more. I've had several people listen to this recording, and one ex-cop friend insisted it, it was a man out in the rural forest at night making these type of guttural, deep-chested sounding, powerful roars. There's no way a regular man could make these extremely powerful roars. To be honest, I think I'd be more terrified if I knew it was a person out there roaring rather than a potential Bigfoot. One person suggested a cow. There are no roaring or non-roaring cows anywhere around there at all. Excuse me. I can't think of any type of critter in southwestern Ohio that could make these sounds. Someone I knew passed the audio on to a military sound analyst. They knew who listened to it and said it wasn't canine or a bovine. But he could not, or maybe would not, identify it. I did play them for, for my friend who lived there, and she laughed and said it was a dog. 
and she hears it occasionally. Really? Once I told her it was not a dog, she immediately shut the conversation down. She told me later she lived out there for years and had never been scared and didn't want to start now. Interesting, though, that she'd never heard that sound before. I will attach the audio file. There's occasional dog barks in the foreground. Thanks, and keep up the great work. All right. Let's hear it. Well, I'm going to have to go into my inbox, too, so you guys are going to have to hear it and possibly not have my comment on it because it's not right here. <laughs> okay? So there it is. There you go. More shares today. We've got a handful more people heard. That's the goal. Giving the people the voice, man, that is giving them all the power in the world, right? Giving people their voice. That is so powerful. Now, on that note, uh, just so you guys know, I'm going to share with all of you what this one particular super kind, mild mannered man has intentionally done to innocent good people. All right, I'm gonna expose every single filthy, dirty, sleazy thing. This one particular, and a few others, what they have done. All right, just so all you know. Why? Because it's truth. It's honest truth. And I strongly believe that people that lurk in the shadows, their true demeanors, what they really truly do, they keep it hidden in the shadows, while lens whoring to the world and showing themselves to be these kind, knowledgeable peoples. I know I'm, I'm not wordslinging too smooth today, but um, yeah, not anymore. And I know you're probably listening. Just, just so uh, the whole world knows, this isn't me doing anything to anybody. This is just me revealing truth, sharing the absolute truth. All right. It's funny how many people, when you get into the human herd, how many people would be intimidated by or not say anything about somebody, truth about what somebody may be doing because they may have a large following. Have they got some kind of status in the human herd, right? Well, that doesn't do shit to me. I don't give a shit who you are, the, who you are, the, the following you have, the amount of TV shows you've been on. If you're an absolute shitbag and I find out, and more importantly, I find out that you've affected some people that I care about. Uh-oh. Your time's up. Your time's up. Your time is up. It's ticking. It's ticking. And obviously, <laughs> proven by the history of this channel, when I decide I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And not, nobody's going to stop me. So there you go. There you go, you guys. If you can think of some of the most kind, mild-mannered, super... Super awesome people when it comes to this topic that's dominated this channel. And who are the most common lens whores the past handful of years? You can probably figure out who I'm about to expose absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to all of you knowing truth. Right? I'm not doing anything to harm anybody. I'm just reciting truth that's been hidden from all of you. Truth. Right? That's what we do here. We share truth. If you're a shitbag, we find out here, you're going to be exposed. Oh, but I've been on so many documentaries and TV shows. It can't be me, possibly. You don't want to do that to me because i got such a large following. <laughs> All the better. All the better. But if you've harmed some kind people, if you've gone out of your way to destroy kind, solid people, 
we find out about it, your time's up. All right? So maybe some people may agree with what I just shared. Somebody might agree. Some may disagree. Well, here's the other part of it. When you uh, finally reach that point of life where you don't give a shit what anybody thinks, you're winning. You're free, right? So there's no side of the coin. I don't give a flying shit what people think. I do care about, I do care about what's right and what's wrong, and I do care about ex about exposing truth at all costs. Because truth needs to be brought out, right? I wonder if you made sense there. I'm so sick right now. I'm so stuffed up and done. Uh, nothing worse than going on a holiday. <coughs> going on a holiday and being sick for three quarters of it. Oh, that's frustrating, huh? Very frustrating, but shit happens. But anyways, there you go, you guys. Maybe you can comment below on how you feel about that. Maybe. Maybe not. Whatever. I guess... Probably a waste of time for me to read anyway, because I don't really give a shit what people think. There's some people out there who have duped all of you for a long time. And uh, I'm going to make sure that they don't do it anymore. I think I'm making sure they don't do it anymore anyway, but I'm going to be a lot more direct soon. All right, so there's no questions. Okay? There you go. Looking forward to it. I'll be back again tomorrow.